This is Doug Varnberg and welcome back to another set of tips and tricks. And today, it's a little frigid outside. We're in the garage here. It's single digits in Missouri. But there's one thing that I've been wanting to do is add a heading sensor GPS from Humminbird to my Onyx system. Most people think that the bow would be the best place to put a heading sensor. Actually, it's probably not the ultimate location. I'm going to show you why and teach you how the way I prefer to do it, um, a heading sensor basically has an electronic compass and helps keep the nose of the boat, knows where the nose of the boat is pointed at all times, especially at slow speed GPS. The one thing people don't realize is that heading sensor, that compass, could be bouncing around. The most unstable part of any bass boat is the bow. Even this Skeeter that is super stable, you get in waves, it's bouncing up and down, the nose of the boat's doing this, and it's actually doing this. So your heading sensor is going to be doing this, bouncing around too. The, actually the transom area is the most stable part of any bass boat. It's a wider area, it's got more weight, you got your fuel tanks, you got your engine back here holding it in the boat, back of the boat where the bow is doing this. This part is staying more stable this part is could be rocking and pitching. So what I'm going to show you is a way to do it. And the other thing to think about in a heading sensor thing is basically you have one keel of the boat. You have one center line that runs right down the middle. Where that V is of the boat, that's your keel. If your back end is pointed, if your back end moves, the front end is going to move. So Knowing the keel of the boat will help make it easier to install your transducer. The other thing is, my side imaging transducer is back here on the jack plate. My 2D sonar is back here on the jack plate. It's not at the console. So you can reduce the offset of your waypoints, of adding any inac inaccuracies to your waypoints, by placing your GPS receiver closer to the transducer. So it's going to give you some multiple benefits. And with the Onyx system, you can only subscribe to one heading sensor on the network. You can put two heading sensor units on the boat. It's only going to subscribe to one of them. So you can actually use the GPS data from the transducer back here for this console unit. But you can use the GPS data out of the, the Onyx bow unit for GPS you can subscribe to the heading sensor from the back of the boat. So you're going to get more stability and you're going to get your heading sensor data from here. You're going to get your GPS data where you want. I'm going to go through some steps to show you how to properly set up a heading sensor to get it pointed in the right direction very close right from the start. So let's jump in here and get to work and I'll show you how it's done. We're up here at the bow of the boat. And what I want to do is I want to find the keel of the boat is the first thing. The keel of the boat is from this point to the dead center in the back. Basically this part that runs underneath, but we're going to measure from the top. So what I want to do is I'm going to use a good old piece, good old fashioned high tech tool called piece of rope. And I'm just going to tie right here. This is going to get me really close. We could tape a piece of string right here, but that's going to get me pretty close to dead center right there. And we're going to throw our rope there, we're going to go to the back, and I'm going to show you how to line this keel up on the boat so we can see it down the middle of the boat, so we can get our heading sensor pointed correctly right from the start. Now that we're back here, I'm going to grab my rope, and right around that This is dead down the center of that engine wiring harness. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull that straight. What I'm going to do is just tie a little knot off here. And that. 
That is the keel of the boat now. So right down that, we measure it. It's going to be dead down the center. Now I've got a second piece of rope. What we need to do is figure the straightness here. Do a 90 degree off of that and we're all set to go. Now what I've got, I've got my other piece of rope. This time I'm going to use the trusty old sticky tape. And I'm going to stick this right here to the side of the boat. And what I want to do is get straight across the transom. go to the other side and repeat. We got her stuck on both sides. Maybe need to cut my hair forward. Looking down this, I've got a perfect 90 degrees. You could use a 90 degree angle if you've got one to make sure that's a 90 degree bend, but I can tell you pretty much looking at my eyeballs is pretty close. You got some tweaking room, you can actually adjust the offset in the Onyx units, we'll show you how to do that too. Um, but this will get you started. Now, probably the number one thing, get you a, just a standard compass. This is a tool it's going to help you find out if you got any magnetic in interference. And this is one of the other pluses of not putting it on the bow. Because I'm going to shoot, if you've watched the previous tips and tricks video, I show the compass, you get close to trolling motor magnetic interference. Magnets will cause the compass to go haywire. It may knock you off 90, 180 degrees, or anywhere in between, or way off. And that's going to affect your heading sensor. So just, just take your compass, move it around. Whoa, whoa, right there. There was something. It's going to help because there's electric wires and stuff. Now I'm getting a sensor right here. It could be uh, something underneath the boat in this position. But right there, it's moving the, the compass. It's turned it this much. What I want to try to do is now it's moving this way. I know north is pretty much that of what. See, I'm getting. Interference there. Every once in a while. And I'm definitely, it's getting very severe here. If you can see, it's pointed here where it should be pointed that away. So, I want to try to stay away from here. But one of the ways that I'm going to test it, before I actually drill the holes and put it in, I'm going to run my wires for my GPS receiver and I want to test it with the unit and see if the heading sensor is going to fluctuate any with the heading sensor itself. That's the positive way to test it is temporarily run it around find where if the heading sensor is changing or not before you actually install it permanently. So to do the Onyx we need to 
GPS NEMA cable that's going to allow us to connect to the uh, GPS receiver. We're going to have our GPS receiver, heading sensor GPS receiver. And it's going to have a cable, and the hardware and all that. But it's going to say AS GPS HS, Precision GPS with Compass. That's the one you're going to need. Don't need any of this. You might throw that in your pocket. That's the good people down in Ufall, Alabama that'll help you if you got any questions. We're going to jump in here, get on the back of the unit, show you how to hook it up, and then do phase two of testing. The next step is to hook the GPS NEMA cable, which is going to hook up to this port right here that I'm taking loose. I'm going to take that cable and I'm just going to set everything up to pre-test before we actually install. So I'm going to run it on the exa outside of the boat. Just hook that up. We're going to go to this cable right here. We're going to hook our GPS receiver to that end. And then we're going to go to the back of the boat and test away. Now one of the first things you need to do is make sure that we I can look up here and I don't see the heading sensor. That's my far right icon and it's not lit up. So I know I need to go into the menu system and set this up. So we're going to first come to home. We're going to come over here to GPS. And we're going to come over to GPS 1. Our source. And I see that we're on internal. That's using the internal. So I want to actually change this one to the external GPS receiver. Next thing we want to do is go into settings and we're going to come down here to nav uh, I think it's navigation nope when you come down to my vessel this is showing the heading sensor and everything else here but we need to come down to my network is the one data sources when you come down here to data sources you need to come down to the heading source and we need to select the NEMA 0183 device that's our heading sensor is it with this unit here so that's where we need to get the heading sensor we come up to GPS 1 we're going to see it's an external what I'm going to do is come down here to GPS 2 and I'm going to select internal so if something happened to GPS, it's going to automatically go to my, my second GPS source is my internal GPS receiver. Just one of the things I do. Come back out now. Now we're going to see that heading sensor pointed. We're at north up. As you can see, if we turn the receiver, we see the boat icon. That's going to, be, that's going to follow that heading line. And see, I'm making it. I'm making it go crazy because I'm turning the GPS receiver. But if I sit here and hold it still, it's going to point in the right direction. Now, one of the things you can see is that receiver is about 90 degrees off. We're pointed pretty much straight north, and we've got electrical interference here, magnetic interference with the receiver that is causing it. Now, see when I move it back it's getting better that's what we're testing for now that we have our string across here I've got my GPS there and you may be able to see it from here but I'm going to move it around that's pretty close I can tweak my GPS receiver where I had magnetic interference my GPS receiver is setting pretty good. This is a positive way to test it. Just watch your unit. Watch the arrow on your the heading sensor. Set it about where you want. If you put it on this line, you can still tweak it a little bit and then there's a setting in the unit that you can tweak the offset a little bit too. So this is way you want to positively test to make sure that your unit
Maybe better back in there. What I'm going to do is open this up. This area right in here is a pretty reliable area. We're going to look at it. We'll test it first before we actually physically bolt it down. But before you start drilling holes in here, you want to make sure that it doesn't go crazy on you. Since we found this area here is pretty reliable on our heading sensor, and that's the thing, is just hold, move it around. It's going to tell you if it's got magnetic interference or not. You're going to see that line jump on the unit. But watch your unit. Watch your receiver. Use your compass. That's going to give you your first step. This is the second step. We'll fine tune it with the mounting of this and then the, orient the orient orientation in the unit. And we'll have that thing dead on perfect keel of our line. The biggest thing is the closer you get to the motor, you want to get it where it gets good reception. I would like it in the right dead in the center, but my motor is going to block could block some of the satellite reception. This is a good open area that the GPS receiver can get good signal strength. If you're worried about signal strength, you can go in your unit and you can look at actually the GPS signal reception of all the satellites. I'm inside, it's going to be difficult, but I'm getting a good reception getting a good straight heading sensor without a lot of variation so this is a good place for me to mount in this area I'm going to pull the panel off, look underneath make sure what I've got underneath here is clear and get to start drilling some holes and stuff I thank you for tuning in to another set of tips and tricks and I hope that helped you understand a little bit better about heading sensor placement getting it for the stability this thing starts rocking back and forth you can watch the GPS. I'm holding it pretty much on the axis. That thing's jumping. So getting this thing in a stable location is going to help you get more precision and better waypoints at the bow or the console wherever you're using the heading sensor. It's a great tool for slow speed navigation like if you're fishing offshore structure. Thank you for tuning in to another set of tips and tricks and tune in next time to go more in depth about other great products that uh, I get the opportunity to use.